Let's try an application now. A sum of $1,500 is deposited in an account with an interest rate of R% percent per year compounded monthly. So this is telling that my R is going to correspond to a percent. So if I'm going to plug something in for R, it's not going to go in as a decimal. It's just going to go in as 6. At the end of two years, the balance is given by the formula A equals 1,500 times the quantity 1 plus R over 1,200 all raised to the 24th. The 24 is there because if we're doing this monthly for two years, we're going to compound interest 24 times. The 12 part on the bottom has to do with the fact that we're compounding monthly. The fact that it's 1,200 is because we incorporated the divide by 100 in the percent into here. So the input here is going to be in percent, and the output is going to be in dollars. What I want to do is I want to find the rate of change of A with respect to R for an interest rate of 6%. Now, since the problem asks for the rate of change without indicating instantaneous or average, we'll find the instantaneous rate, and we'll do that by finding the derivative. So we're going to have to find the derivative dA over dr, and once we're done, we're going to plug in r equals 6%. So I want to emphasize here, if they want you to find an average rate of change, they'll always say the word average. If they leave it out, you should assume that it's instantaneous. So I've gone ahead and written my formula out here. So now to find dA dr, we have to take the derivative with respect to r of 1,500 times the quantity 1 plus r over 1,200, that quantity raised to the 24th power. I'll notice here that there's a 1,500 that's multiplying this stuff here. So let me go ahead and use our constant rule, and I'm going to pull that out in front of the derivative. Because constants do not affect the derivative unless it's just a constant by itself. So now what we need to do is take the derivative of 1 plus r over 1,200, that quantity, raised to the 24th power. And this is going to require us to use a chain rule. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what my inside function is, and clearly that has to do with 1 plus r over 1,200. But because this is a function of r, I'm going to write this as g of r and say 1 plus r over 1,200. This is a function of r, not x. That's why I wrote g of r. That means my outside function f of r, so I'm going to use the same variable, is going to be r to the 24th. When I put g in place of r, it gives me the quantity that I'm taking the derivative of. So in order for me to take the derivative, I need to know g prime of r, the derivative of 1 plus r over 1200. So the derivative of the 1 is 0. I'm going to think of this as 1 over 1,200 times r. The 1 over 1,200 comes through the derivative. I take the derivative of r, and what I end up with is 1, or 1 over 1,200 times 1, or just 1 over 1,200. The derivative of r to the 24th is going to be 24r to the 23. So now all I need to do is do my chain rule. So I have to take f prime and put into that g of r and then multiply that times g prime of r. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the 24r to the 23rd, but in place of the r, I've put g. And now I'll multiply that by g prime of r. The f prime part is the 24 raised to the 23rd power, and inside of it is the g. So my derivative ends up being 1,500 times 24 times the quantity 1 plus r over 1,200 to the 23rd times the fraction 1 over 1,200. 
Normally, I would probably stop there if I was taking a derivative. But I know in the next step, I have to plug some numbers into this. And so I'm going to try and combine some things here. Let's go ahead and take 1,500 times 24 and multiply that by 1 over 1,200. When I do that, I get 30. So what I'm now left with then is 30 times the quantity 1 plus r over 1,200 to the 23rd power. What's left to do now is to put in place of r, 6, calculate that, and then figure out what it means. So here's some new notation. Whenever you see da, dr, or any symbol for a derivative, a vertical line, and off of that vertical line, r equals 6, or the variable equal to a number, that says take that derivative and plug r equals 6 into it. This is a lot easier than trying to write that mouthful out in words. What I'm going to do is take what we came up with before, and I'm going to put 6 into it. So I'm going to get 30 times the quantity 1 plus 6 over 1200, that quantity raised to the 23rd power. I'll go ahead and put that into my calculator and calculate it. And what I get is 33.65. What we need to think about is what does that mean? And some of you have just may hate this, this format of writing out derivatives here, but one good thing about writing this is it really helps you to see what are the units on this 33.65. Because this kind of looks like a fraction, and if we look at it, remember that the A's were in dollars, and the R's were in percent. So the units that we're getting here on the slope are going to be dollars per percent. So this is telling me that dA dr, the derivative of A with respect to R, or the rate of change of A with respect to R, is 33.65 dollars per percent. So what that's telling me, if I'm at a rate of 6, and I'm going to increase my interest rate by 1%, I'm going to get $33.65 more for that increase in of 1%. So going from 6 to 7% means that the amount at the end of two years is going to increase by $33.65. This is what we mean when we say interpret a derivative, is put the units on it, and figure out what it means in the context of this problem.